Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Melva, and this is Stitching with Melva. So this is going to be a reboot because this is not my first Floss Tube video. Back, back, way back in the day, before it was even called Floss Tube, I used to do videos, and then I just decided to stop. So I thought now would be a good time to sort of do a reboot. So of course I'm going to start with a whip parade. Now I have a lot <laughs> of whips. So if that's not your thing, that's totally cool and maybe this isn't the video for you. I'm what you call a promiscuous stitcher. I stitch around so I don't even actually know how many whips I have and what I'm going to show you today isn't all the whips that I have um, because I didn't include any of my mill hill. So if that's something you're interested in, you can certainly leave a comment and maybe um, the next following videos I can show you some of my mill hills. It's not like I have a lot of mill hill whips, but again, once I sort of got all my whips out and prepped and ready, I was just like, I was kind of done with it. So uh, I'll tell you a bit about myself. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I've lived here for about 20 years. I do work full time at an insurance agency, so I'm one of those lucky people that gets to work from home. So I'm the typical work from home person. I roll out of bed, grab some coffee, and then I'm on my computer. So uh, I'm very lucky that way. I am married, going on my 16th year, and I have two grown children. They're actually my stepchildren but they're both in their 30s, so I just uh, it's just my husband and I, and then our cat, who is a Sphinx cat, who is a huge baby. So he's actually turning 15 this month. So um, I did put him to bed, and again, if you have a Sphinx cat, you know you actually have to put them to bed. They will not go to bed on their own. Um, so if he wakes up, he will definitely be joining us. Uh, heads up if you're wearing headphones, um, he is very loud, so <laughs> hopefully he will not wake up for this because as we all know when you do a whip parade there is a lot of stuff all around. So grab yourself a cup of coffee. This is my mug. Of course it has a cat on it and it says good time and then it says we are having a great time. And we are going to have a great time. So sit back and relax. Um, I have lots of different whips, so hopefully you find something that um, you enjoy. So here we go. Oh, before we start, I'm going to try my best to keep um, keep it in this. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> Um, hopefully I don't have to move the camera. So just a little bit of backstory. Um, four years ago, I was in a major car accident that um, actually kept me in hospital for 140 days. So as you can imagine, I have injuries from head to toe. So um, I'm not sure how long I'll be able to actually be holding up my whips before it actually uh, starts to hurt. So fun fact, my right arm is the only limb that I have that doesn't have any titanium in it. So my sisters always joke that I'm actually turning into a robot or turning <laughs> into the bionic woman. So um, yeah, so if all of a sudden it changes to where you're just looking down on the whips, just know that um, I just got tired, that's all. So let's start. So the first whip I'm going to show you is something that I was working on this week. So basically it's a combination of two sort of whips put together. Now I didn't do this, this was someone else that came up with it. So again, back in the day, this was um, a Facebook group you could join to get the borders. So the, the part in the middle is the Country Cottage Needlework Sheep in the Meadow. And then around the outside is um, the Little House Needleworks 
the little sheep virtues. So I'm just going to show you the first one because I'm sure everyone's seen this. This one's hope. And then what some very smart lady did was to make a border for it. And then you do have to change the, um, the middle part just so everything can fit. So um, again, I don't even know if that Facebook group is up anymore. That was like maybe 2016. So um, again, I can check to see. I don't even know how I would do that because I don't even remember the Facebook group. But uh, I kept this in the cute snap because I am working on it. So I just have the middle part done. So basically you sort of follow the pattern, but you can't really because um, the grass here has changed so much. So basically you just pop in the sheep wherever you want to. Now I actually have what fabric I'm working on. Oh, that's another thing. I never write down the fabric. So if I do tell you the fabric, it is going to be a miracle. So this is actually, I got this off Etsy and it's from number 12 Stitch Co. And it's French pear. So it's a very nice light, light green, which is probably not showing up very good. But that's the first one. And as we go through, you'll see that I have a few obsessions with my stitching. So the first obsession I have is I love monthly, um, anything that has to do with monthly. And so I actually had to put a stop to it because I had so many monthlies and I was like, do I really need to have eight different cross stitch patterns telling me what month it is? Yes. The answer is yes, of course I do. So the first one is, again, I'm not going to show you all of them, but it's um, a perpetual calendar and it's Fun Every Day by Sam Samsara. And so basically it's all done on pepper perforated paper. And open it up here. And I've already bought the stand for it because I thought by the time I get this done, the stand probably won't be available, to be honest with you. So the first one that I'm doing is Monday. I'm just having a hard time with it because it's all full coverage. So you're like, oh, that will stitch up really quick. And then you realize that it's all full coverage, so it's not gonna stitch up quick. Uh, I was trying to work on this every Saturday, but that hasn't been that successful. So I guess I'm just gonna have to try a little bit harder to keep up with that. And the next one is um, from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy and it's floral postcards. So I'm just showing you the January one because that's the one I'm working on right now. And this is a week's dye works fabric. So you do have to make sure that your tension is very good because it's a very loose weave. But it's probably 32 count or 30 count if it's weeks. Okay, and then the last one in the series that I'm working on is Little House Needleworks, the Calendar Girl series, and I'm working on May. There she is. So I'm doing this on 18 count uh, vintage country mocha. So I had started her, let me get my little board here. So hopefully that helps me with, let's show the nice side here. Do you see the nice side? So I was working on this and then I kept like not wanting to work on it. And I was like, what's the problem here? She's so cute. Of course I love her. And then uh, this is two over one and it was just getting so, so tight. Like my wedding dress is now, <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. Um, and then I was like, I'm not, I'm not liking this at all. So then what I did is I switched it up. and did it one over one, and I love it. I actually don't like doing one over one. Um, 
I find it quite annoying actually, but in this case I'm willing to do it just because um, I think she looks so much better and it's just more enjoyable to stitch. I just found that the holes with two over one was just way too tight. So I've actually already finished January through April as well as June. So um, I actually finished them too and have them displayed. April is actually displayed, which is amazing. So hopefully I finish her by the start of May. I actually work on her every Saturday. Okay. So the next one actually was bought in Ireland. So last year my husband and I went to um, Ireland on a cruise. So we actually did the, all of the British Isles and this was in Northern Ireland. And I saw a cross stitch picture and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to buy it because it was um, kind of like a touristy shop. So it had tons of cool stuff in there. And I was like, when do you ever see cross stitch pictures that aren't in a cross stitch store. So this is called Nag Nag Nag. And there's some horses and sheep. And it came with 14 count. And I was like, oh, I'll just do this up while I'm on the cruise. Well, no, I didn't do that because there is a lot of quarter stitches in here. So as soon as I saw that, I came back home and put it on a 32 count because I'm like, I'm not doing a 14 count with quarter stitches because to me that's just a nightmare. So I just got a little bit done and then I was like, what's with all these quarter stitches? So I've just put it aside, but definitely that's one to I'll get done because um, it's just a fun memory of that cruise that we took, which was fantastic. Okay, the next one is from Needlework Press and it is the Halloween time clock. So I actually have this clock. I bought it at Michael's. It's a Tim Holtz clock and I actually already have it displayed with time to stitch, but I do want to switch it out for the different seasons. So they have a springtime, a Halloween time and a Christmas time. And this is the Halloween time. This is what I've done. So this is on a week's style works. It's just the called for. And then I actually just used some of um, my own thread and sort of changed up the colors. So just some hand dyed floss that I had and then obviously the black. And then, oh, there's a long piece of thread on that one. And then here's the Christmas time. And again, I sort of switch up these patterns. This one's quite busy, so I don't think I'm gonna add in everything. And all I did was I just went through my um, hand dyed floss and just sort of picked out colors that I liked. So here is Christmas time. So these ones I'll definitely get done this year and just um, put some of them on sticky backboard and then um, I can pop them in and out of the clock when it's appropriate. It's super cute. Okay, the next one is part of a series. So I also love nativity. So I do have a lot of nativity patterns. So I don't have a picture to show you because um, the pattern is the picture. So this is the one that I'm working on. I work on this every Sunday. So this is the angel from the nativity story. So these are actually going to be stand-ups. So I'm going to watch Helen D's stand-up, um, how to make stand-up tutorials and be brave and take out my sewing machine and actually get these done. So I've actually already done the Holy Family. I've done um, a shepherd boy, a sheep, and I'm gonna get the angel done and then I might work on the, um, the three kings. So she's a little bit more detailed 
So she's going to have beads as well as Krennic in her. Now these are not for new stitchers. <laughs> um, this is from Lewis Arts Crafts. So I think you can go on their website and uh, download the patterns. So I believe they're still available. Now, um, because these are from, gosh, the 90s probably, um, it, they're notorious for using the same symbol for a lot of different ones, except they change the color. And there's a lot of quarter stitches in here. So this is not something you like put on a new TV show and watch. You do need to concentrate. So there is like big blocks of colors, but especially the faces with the back stitch are very detailed. Um, where her arm meets her, her dress. Again, lots and lots of quarter stitches. And again, just looking at the pattern um, is difficult because it will be the same symbol and you're like, what color is that? So you do need to concentrate and you do need a, to be a bit more of an experienced stitcher in order to be successful. This one's on a 30 count. Um, they suggest a 14 or 16 count and I was like, there is no way that you would want to do that on an Ada just because it would just be so, so difficult. Okay, so what I've done with my whips here is I've sort of organized them in themes, but some of them didn't have themes, so I put those ones up front. So there's just gonna be sort of an eclectic mix, and then you'll start seeing themes of what I really like to stitch. So this is from Carriage House Sampling, and it's called Deer House. And it says, Deer House, you are really very small, just big enough for love, that's all. And we live in a very small house, so I thought that was appropriate. So I'm doing this on a 32 count. Uh, picture this plus, I think it's called Pansy. And as you can see, I have changed all the colors. So I just went through my um, hand dyed threads and picked out two that I thought would be cute together. So I do like the purple because you will actually be able to see it quite well because the house is going to um, cover up all the purple words. In this one, I can't show you the pattern because, um, the picture, because the picture is the pattern, but it is from Lord of the Rings and it's actually what Arwen says to Aragorn, bit of a fan. Uh, I would rather share one lifetime with you than face all the ages of this world alone. So again, I didn't use the colors that they suggested. I just went through my hand dyed and there's a big old thread on there. Hand dyed and just did it that way. And going to get this done this year for our anniversary. Our anniversary is actually on uh, December 31st. We did that so we'd actually remember when our anniversary was. <laughs> I'm just going to take a drink here. This next one is by Shakespeare's Peddler and it's Antique Cups and Spoons. So they had a whole series come out, so I actually have a whole bunch of other ones. So I have the scissors, the birds, and the keys and locks. So again, oh, I actually have the thread in here. I'm using Tarnish Gold for this. So this is on, get that out of the way. This is on a 36 count linen and it looks like just an antique white or an antique ivory. And this is what I have done on it. Again, just using one thread over two. I really like that look. I find two over two on 36 count is a little bit too bulky for me. But again, it's whatever your style is, right? So. Um, it's always good to sort of test out your fabric to see because different fabric will hold the thread differently. 
Now this one, I don't need to show you a picture because it is basically done. I do need to make a few, um, I need to take something out and redo it and put on the buttons. But this is on a 14 count Ada. And it is from Picture This Plus. Almost, almost all of my Picture This Plus fabric, um, fabric I have is Picture This Plus. So, so there's, so this was a four part series and it is by Raise the Roof Design. So I actually have to redo this because the stitches aren't tight enough. These are long stitches and they're, um, this fabric is really soft, so it's going to be challenging to do the long stitches, but I didn't do it right the first time, so I'm really not happy with it. And I've put on a few of the buttons, um, but there's more buttons to put on. But this is so cute. My husband actually used to do um, tattooing, so I got this for him because I just thought that was so cute. And the next one, I think lots of people have seen this one and done this one. It's called 99. So it's 99 bottles of beer on the wall. And this one is on 18 count ale by Picture This Plus. And I've gotten a lot of the bottles done. The pattern's actually quite cute because there is a section of the pattern that tells you what all these beer bottles are. But it's quite, quite fun that just with a small, small stitch count, you can sort of see and recognize the bottles. This one is really fun to stitch up. If you're concentrating, you can stitch like a bottle and a half a night. So it doesn't take too, too long. There are some color changes though. This is from La Di Da, and it is called Peace House. I remember I had dreams about this one. I love this one so much. Sometimes when I really love a pattern, I actually don't want to finish it because then it's going to be over and I won't be able to like touch it anymore. Um, so I don't know if I'm the only one or I'm just, you're like, you're a weirdo. Uh, I don't know if I'm the only one that does that, but this is especially one that I kind of want to like extend for as long as possible. So I did change the, the bunny rabbit because it was just too dark there. I just wanted to lighten it up. So I believe that's Weak Sty Works Beige. And I think the bunny looks a lot better, but really I don't have that much left to do, but I don't want it to be over, so. I just keep doing a tiny little bit at a time. The next one is a dimensions kit called Live Life in the Moment. I just love this one. I love all the colors. And I just think it is just so sweet. I, I don't know, I just really love it. I did switch out the fabric to a 28 count. And it's very, like, it's very thick. I've never stitched on such a thick fabric before, but it's turning out beautifully. It's just so lovely. Okay, so I'm also a Star Wars fan, but because I'm old, I just really like four, five, and six. Um, so the one, two, and three, they're okay. The newer ones, not my cup of tea. So I got this pattern. It's a dimensions kit. And this one's on Black Ada, and I don't have a hard time on Black Ada, so um, it's a 14 count, so it's actually pretty easy to read. And this is, 
This is what I have, no back stitching, so they kind of look a little creepy. But I think it's gonna turn out really good. This next one is barely a start, but I'll show you anyway. It's Bothy Threads, Kings and Queens. And they actually have um, King Charles out now that you can get off their website, which is like a free download, which is super, super cool, I think. And I switched out the fabric because again, this one actually has some quarter stitches in there and I was like, I don't want to do quarter stitches on 14 count. Like I stitch, I stitch on everything. I have no problem with it, but when it's like quarter stitches, I really want to stitch on linen at that point. So that's just the first dude there. That's all I have. And then for some reason I was like, nah, I'm going to move on to something else. So this is a huge piece of fabric because I'm not sure how big <laughs> the fabric needs to be. So normally I do cut my fabric, but this one I'm like, oh, I don't want to cut it too short. So I just left it in a gigantic piece. Now we're moving on to our ladies. So the first one is a dimension kit called uh, Simply Vintage. And this just reminded me of my mom because she used to make a lot of our clothes. Um, in growing up and in high school and stuff and so we always used to go to Fabricland which is like the main fabric store in Canada and I remember just spending hours and hours picking out different patterns for my mom to to make for me so this was on a 14 count and I just felt that it was a little bit too bulky for the for the design so I switched it out to I believe this is 28 count and it's just uh, an ivory. So I have the first lady looking all creepy without, oh, she does have eyes, but no back stitching. There's that. Then I do have a few marabilias. So the first one is Mo Miss New Year's Eve Fairy. So I got this as a kit. And I got it because that's when my anniversary is. So I thought that would be appropriate to have her. I didn't get too far on her. I have to take out the Krennic because I did a really messy job on the Krennic. So I'm going to have to pull that out from her wings and from here. Just because I, I don't like it. It's too messy. So that's going to bother me. To have her and then Easter is my favorite holiday so I had to get the Easter fairy so here's what she's gonna look like and again this came as a kit so it had all the specialty uh, threads and it has all the hand dyed threads and the beads that you need out of all of them she's probably the least beaded up and I worked on her this Easter. I got this much done on her. So she's looking really good and just very sweet. And then this one I started last week. So it's Shakespeare's Fairies. I love this one. I've had this one for such a long time and I just decided that it's time to start. So I'm doing it on the called for fabric which is like a 32 count. I'm not sure what color it is but here's what I have started. I like to start in the middle just so I know that there you can see it um, just so I know that I have enough fabric. There's that. And 
The next one is the letters from Nora, and obviously I'm doing the M because my name starts with M, so that makes sense. She's pretty close to a finish here, so I'm going to work on her near the end of this month and hopefully finish her up. I've already started some of her, her beading because I just felt like beading one day, so I was like, I'm going to do some beading on my little fairy there. But yeah, this is all the called for, the called for um, fabric and all the colors didn't change a thing. She is beautiful. And this was my birthday start last year. My birthday is actually tomorrow. So um, I started the April Ferry last year. And I actually don't mind stitching on white. I I find if you railroad your stitches and have the proper tension, it turns out really good. And don't use a really, like I actually don't use long pieces of floss when I, um, when I cross stitch. So yeah, I really like stitching on white because then you can see how nice and neat your stitches are. Now I did her on a hot pink because I love the color pink and I just thought she's mostly white so I wanted her to really show up. So I've done a little bit. This is just a tiny bit but I'm going to work on her next week. And there she is. Okay, this next one is a butternut road and she's called earth dancer i had dreams about her as well i saw her and then just became completely obsessed now the problem is the um, the fringe on the bottom that's actually a suede thread which you can't find anymore i don't think it's available so i just put it out of the universe that i needed to find her and then someone on Etsy was selling the whole kit, like all the threads, the specialty threads, everything. Um, not the, not the fabric though. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to buy her. So yes, I'm very excited about her. Now she is on a 28 count fossil from Picture This Plus. And here's where she's at. She's so beautiful. I just, yeah, there's just no words with how beautiful she is. And then of course she has all her beads as well and um, some specialty, some specialty thread in the dream catcher. So she is going to be absolutely gorgeous. And now we're on to cats because I'm obsessed with cats. So <laughs> the next thing we're gonna all see is all my favorite cat stuff, which I still have more that I haven't started. So I am that crazy cat lady. So the first one is um, the Meow Block Party by Hands On Design. So cute. Now I've done it on Oaken, but I had two pieces of fabric of Oaken. So the first piece I did, let's show you an order here, was the bottom. No, this is the top with all the cat's faces. And then I was like, there's no way I'm gonna have enough fabric to do the whole piece, but I really liked the Oaken. So I was like, oh, no problem. I'll just order some more Oaken. Um, well, the problem is it's very different. So it's still Oaken, but um, it's a much different shade. It's more like of a pink hue. I guess there's some rose or something in it. So this is what I did on the, um, this is the side of the block. 
but I think it's gonna be okay because I'll just put it over so you I don't know if the lighting you're gonna be able to see the difference oh yeah you can see it but I was like one's gonna be for the top and bottom and one's gonna be for the sides so I'll just have to see if that really bothers me or not sometimes I'm bothered by stuff like that and other times like my Grammy used to say, a man on a galloping horse is never going to notice. So, you know, sometimes I just don't care. The next one, I'm taking three patterns and putting it into one. So two of them, well, all three of them are kits. So the first one says, did somebody say sushi? And then this one is, this is how I roll. So I'm not going to do the words, I'm just going to do the cats, and then in between I'm going to do these little smiling sushi. They're just so cute. I actually don't like sushi, but my husband loves sushi. So, But I'm just in it for the cats, really. So I just started on the one, the one cat. But yeah, so I'm going to do a cat, some sushi rolls, and another cat, and maybe some sushi rolls along the bottom. But it's just going to be just a little fun one with some kitties. And I, oh, no, this isn't the last cat one. You're like, enough with the cats. This is a Design Works um, one called Leopard Shoe. And there's also another pattern called polka dot shoe with a cat and obviously I have that one as well. And this one is on I think a 32 count pansy. I think that's what it's called. Picture this plus. Look how cute. Oh. Love it. That is one small cat or one big shoe. Okay, and then let me just see my pile. Yes, the last of the cats is a cooler design and it's called No Ordinary Cats. So this is Hello Backstitch. Pretty heavy backstitch, but oh, so cute. And looks like I'm just doing this on a, probably a 32 count beige. I'm kind of moving all over the place here, but I think I made a mistake somewhere in here, so I'm gonna stitch from the bottom up and then just fudge it because I don't feel like trying to find my mistake in that cat. Sometimes I will rip out a whole bunch of stitches depending on what the mistake is, but other times, like this is self-contained, so it's, it's somewhere inside the design, so at that point I'm not going to rip it out, but if it was like outside the design, like I had a problem with the frame, then absolutely. I would take everything out because then that's going to put everything else off. Okay, so now we're at Easter because now we're into the holidays. So this one is called Spring Hair by La Dee Da. I did switch up the colors because I just felt it needed a little bit of pop of color so I did put a pink in his bow tie and pink for the flower because I didn't want to do a brown flower but I'm pretty close on this one I really hate doing borders so <laughs> that's why I stalled is because I'm like oh man I hate doing borders it's just too stressful. It's like, is it going to match up? I don't know. So now I'm just like, does he need a border? Still undecided. 
This is Hands-On Designs More Chocolate Bunnies. So this one's really cute. I know lots of people have done this one already. And this one's done with the sulky threads. I don't know. I like they're nice, but I fail to see the hype. And this is what I got so far. So coming along bit by bit. This is, is the Calico Confectionery and it's called Easter Silhouette. I love the pattern. I wasn't a huge fan of the colors, so I changed the colors for some hand dyed. And I wanted it to be more traditional Easter colors, so um, I picked purple and yellow because those are Easter colors. This is what I have so far. Looks really cute. And this is also from the Calico Confectionery and it's Basket of Bunnies. So I'm excited to try out my sewing. I have a beautiful new sewing machine. I even took a sewing class. Um, but sewing machines just scare the bejeebers out of me. And I finished the boy bunny. If I can get him separated here. So he's all set and then on the other side I'll do the girl bunny and this is 32 count uh, picture this plus I think it's Mesa M-E-S-A I think that's what it's called but I was always like what am I gonna put on this fabric and then I was like ah Easter that's the perfect color for Easter it's a nice peachy peachy color and then you're like seriously more Easter yes Marshmallow Row. This is from Calico Confectionery as well. Now I didn't use any of the colors. I wanted mine to look more pastel-y and more like Easter colors. So I went into um, my hand dyed thread and just picked out, I kept like the same color range like purples and blues and yellows and greens but I just picked um, some variegated thread because I thought it would be more fun to stitch with the variegated and um, instead of just doing big block stitching to provide some interest so there's that so cute okay that's all the Easter oh my arm is getting sore but we're getting, we're getting close to the end, so I'm just gonna push through. Now I also have a bit of an obsession with Noah's Ark. So I have a lot of patterns and kits that are Noah's Arks, but I've restrained myself to only working on two. But that could totally change. This is a Dimensions Charts and Charms and it is called Noah's Journey. So I got this off eBay. Now this is an old chart. I think it's like from the 90s. So it was interesting. Let's see if it says 1996. So some of the colors have obviously changed because it's so tiny. Sorry, I'm gonna try and move it up close. But all the gray that you see, the color that was supposed to be was a green. It had a green hue to it. So like the dolphin, the elephants, the hippopotamuses would all be kind of green. And I was like, that's really not gonna work for me. So thankfully, DMC came out with those 
the one, two, three, four colors that are all grays. So I've used, I'm using those instead to create some shadow and effect. So this is what I have so far. For the um, dolphin in the corner, that's a weak Dye Works variegated thread that I use. But oh, look at them. Like when I first started this, I couldn't put it down because it was just so much fun. You just be like, I'm just going to stitch this little animal. And then it's like, okay, wait, this other animal's touching it. So I'm going to stitch that now too. And this is just on an 18 count Ada. Because I, I was like, well, I don't want it to be gigantic because it will be gigantic. But I was like, well, this is a way to keep it a little bit smaller. And then I have the Boffy thread cut through Noah's Ark. So this one's great. Like how fun is that? And I'm using all the kits, the kit supplied stuff. So the kit fabric and all of their floss, which is beautiful floss. And here's where I'm at. I started in the middle. And it doesn't really look like much now, but once you get that back stitch in, it's gonna look amazing. And the one thing I love about Bothy Threads Kit is they give you two patterns. So one pattern is just the cross stitch, and then the next pattern is the back stitch. And so that is so helpful because it's not like you're trying to figure out what color that's over top of a back stitch or vice versa. So I highly recommend Bothy Thread Kits because um, the Ada is just so soft and so lovely to work with. The threads, I think, are Madeira, I think so, or did I just make that up? Um, and they're beautiful to work with, and they're just fantastic kits to have. So if you haven't tried Bothy Thread Kits, I highly recommend them. Okay, now we are in Thanksgiving. So I do do Thanksgiving first because in Canada our Thanksgiving is in October before Halloween. So for those people who are like, you are not doing them in order. In fact, I am. So this is a Joan Elliott design. It says, give thanks for all things. And I worked on this when I was on a cruise with my husband through the Panama Canal. So I have lots of good memories of working on this. So I don't like working on black. I find it very harsh. So I actually um, am doing it in a dark brown, which I think just warms it up a little bit. So. Here's where it is, and I actually did lots when I was on the cruise. It just is so easy when you are only really working with one thread. There is some pops of colors in it, which makes it just beautiful. Oh, oh no, she's falling. And the reason why I have such tight borders is because I was like, I don't think this is a big enough. I think I was just enough fabric which is so not me but I really wanted to put it on this fabric so and I wanted to start it right away but that just looks so good oh my goodness and then this is a Lizzie Kate and it's the pair of pilgrims so I'm just working on the guy there so all her stand-ups are so cute. Like I want to get the Halloween ones and I have the Easter bunny ones. I have the Christmas ones, but um, there's a witch and a vampire. Oh, they're so, so adorable. Now this is the only time I've ever done this, <laughs> but it's kind of a big mistake. Um, so I started in the middle and I put it in my key snap and then I wasn't paying attention and I orientated it the wrong way. So he's actually like the wrong way on the fabric. So I know he'll fit on the bottom, but the top 
might be a little bit tight so when I do the stand up he might look a little bit weird but um, there he is in all his glory does he oh I dropped him oh yeah he doesn't have eyes so he looks pretty creepy right now okay now we're on to Halloween And this is the Chopping Mall by the Witchy Stitcher, I think. Now I've never done a stitch along. I probably will never do a stitch along and I certainly would never do a mystery stitch along. But this, I bought this after it's, it had already come out and I'm a huge fan of horror movies. So I was like, you know what? That is pretty awesome. So I feel I need this in my life. So I got it and couldn't stop. Couldn't stop doing it. So I got a lot done on this one. So there it is. Amazing. Now I have a boo-boo here. I'm one square off. So technically Chucky isn't on the floor. So I'm gonna have to rip it all out and then redo that because that will absolutely bother me. But look how great that is. It's just so clever and so adorable. And this is on 32 count haunted by picture this plus so I thought that was appropriate but I did all of that just as soon as I got the pattern like that's not over like you know start and stop that was like I am getting in on this this is the prayer schooler when witches go riding I know quite a few people have done this. And here's where I am. So lots of work still to do because the, the top and bottom are actually full coverage, but I love Prairie Schooler. It's just so cute how much you can do with just a few colors and and they always turn out so well. This one is from Artisy and it's Halloween Minis. So this is full coverage. I love that witch in the middle. She's so great. And I'm doing this on an 18 count Ada. So I actually, on this one, I started at the bottom because there's so many colors in here that all I had was the colors in the bottom. And then I, I have all the colors now, but I really wanted to start this. And the next one I don't have a picture for. This is from a magazine, but it's going to say Hocus Pocus, I need coffee to focus. And it's on a 20 count Ada. And I'm changing the colors so that Pocus is a variegated thread, but I'm using the called for for the coffee to get the, that's actually just DMC getting a variegation using DMC. And this one is a restart. I had actually put it on 18 count Ada and then I didn't really like how it looked. So I switched it over to 32 count Picture This Plus Haunted. 
So I'm actually just going to do it. It's shown here as in three pieces, but I'm going to do it as one piece. And it is Sleepy Hollow by the Cricut Collection. I just started in the middle. Oh, this is such a big piece of fabric. <laughs> no, I think it's 28 counts. Sorry, not 32. Because it was... The called for is a 30 count, so with picture this plus, it's probably at a 30 count now. And I just started in the middle there. So I do have a thread hanging because that's for my back stitch. There's not very much back stitch, but I just wanted to sort of see what it was going to look like. Ooh, we're getting close to the end, people. This one is the Primitive Hair Halloween Cubes. I also have her Christmas Cubes. Such a great decoration this is going to turn out to be. And this is, <laughs> not quite sure how to show you this because it's all over the place. I have them going in all different directions to fit them on this piece of 32 count whatever color it is so I guess I'll just show it like this and then going sideways I haven't started the Christmas ones yet, so. And then this is Lizzie Kate Halloween Rules. Now let's see if I can. I'm not gonna show you, because they all come as individual patterns, so I'm not gonna show you all the individual patterns. This is like 75% done. Mm, I don't know how I'm gonna show you this. Maybe you don't need to see all of it. You can see the majority of it though. There. So it comes with little buttons with the patterns and then the border and this is like free off her on the website. So, and again, I started doing the border. I really hate doing borders. <laughs> it's the bane of my existence. And now we're into Christmas. So this is another Bothy Threads kit. It's called Cut Through North Pole House. This one is super fun. The only thing that kind of bothers me on this is like right here. I'm like, what is that? Is that like stench? Like, is that like saying that it's smelly? I don't think I'm gonna put that in because why does this hat smell so bad? keeps me up at night and for some reason I started in the left hand corner of this one I love this little seal poking his head through and again just using everything that came with the kit This one is another nativity, so don't be alarmed. I do destroy my patterns, so I will cut them, I will fold them. I don't highlight them, but I'll use pencil. So you're gonna see a pattern that's been cut just for me to make it easier for stitching. So <laughs> please don't, you know, silently cry to yourself. It's okay, it's just a pattern. So this is from Imagining, and uh, there's three parts. So there's Bethlehem, Shepherds, and Three Kings. So this is what Bethlehem's gonna look like. And then Shepherds. And 
three kings. So they chose very kind of boring colors. I think it's black, brown, and purple. And I was like, I think we can do better than that. So again, I just went through my stash and found some um, hand dyed. This is on an 18 count picture of this plus I'm sorry I don't know what the name of it is but it is very cool because it has like pinks and blues in it and I just started on Bethlehem so I'm going to do them down this way and so Bethlehem's going to be blue I think the shepherds are going to be green and then obviously the kings are going to be purple but because it's just all like straight stitching I wanted some very variegation to make it a little bit more appealing to me as well as just visually more appealing. And this is Satsuma Street Deck the Halls. I love this one because these are not traditional Christmas colors and I was like, oh yeah, I feel I need this in my life. So I'm just doing it on the called for. Ooh, this is gonna be another hard one to show. Well, maybe not, it will fit on my board here. Oh yeah, it fits. So this is where I've got to on this one. That's my chair squeaking. So if you know some squeaking, that's a chair. This is so much fun to stitch. Like it's just the bright colors and she's amazing when it comes to choosing colors. I have a lot of her um, decorations, her decorations kits. Oh, they're so much fun to stitch. And this one is just a winter one. It's Winter Cardinals by Dimensions. Cardinals were my dad's favorite birds. So when I bought this for him, when he was still alive, I was like, oh, this will remind me of my dad. So I love the kit. The only regret is I wish I would have switched out the fabric. Um, it's just really hard to work with this 16 count. It's so tight and thick, but the birds, look how great they turned out. I love doing them. So now I obviously wanted to do the birds first. So now I just have the greenery and the snow which is not quite as exciting, but the greenery is actually kind of fun to do, but nothing compared to those birds. Next one is the Prairie Schooler, the 12 Days of Christmas. So I'm just gonna show you the pattern nine to 12 because I've done all the rest. So I'm actually on, what am I? 10 Lords of Leapin'. That's the one. So I just have 10, 11, and 12 left. Is that right? Oh yeah. The Lords are leaping. That's the right one. Now, this one got stalled because I think I might be one square off. And I'm like contemplating what to do about it. So it's like, is someone gonna notice? That's really, really big. Or do I care? So I'm still in contemplation mode. What I'm gonna do about number 10. Because of course I based everything off that one thing. <laughs> so I'm leaning more towards fudging as opposed to ripping all of it out. But, um, I'm pretty sure no one will notice unless they go up really, really close and they know what they're looking for. So I think I'm okay with fudging it. This is my first Luca S kit and it is Mouse with Fur Tree. So he was just too adorable to pass up. Their kits are really, really nice. The only sort of thing that um, I find a little bit challenging is when it goes to the second page, it doesn't um, shade in the area that you've already stitched. So you really have to be careful that 
your matching of the pattern properly. But other than that, the threads are fantastic. Um, I'm not using the Ada, but um, the Ada is really quite nice. I just put this on a 32 count. But look at him getting all ready for the holidays. So sweet. Okay, hey, this next one is Woodland Santa. I'm in love with this. I've obsessed about this for so long and it is stitching up like a dream. It is so wonderful to stitch. The pattern is beautiful. And I can't even describe how it makes me feel because it is definitely one of my, my favorites. And I'm really happy I just picked the called for fabric because I just think that it just looks so great on the called for fabric. I just wanted everyone to focus on the picture, so, and not on the fabric. But look at that bear. Like, and he's not like overly complicated, but he just looks so, so great. The last time I really wanted to get to that owl, so. I worked very, very hard to get to that owl. <laughs> so this one I think about a lot and I'm like, you have to stitch on other things, Melva. You can't just stitch on, you know, that one particular one. And I think I kind of want to make it last too. So I'm sort of in that, what do I do sort of thing? Do I work on it all the time or do I take my time and enjoy every stitch? This is another Joan Elliott design. It's called Christmas in Blue, which is a beautiful design. And it's interesting because I love this, but blue is my least favorite color. But this is just too beautiful to not stitch. And it has some beads in it as well. So that'll be fun when I get to that. So this is where I, I'm at, stitching up so beautifully. So this has Krennic and beads in it, and I'm just loving it. This next one I'm sure I'll get some judgment on. Um, <laughs> it's called, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's basically done. I have to put the snow in one section and I have to put the, um, the buttons on <laughs> but I have it why because I have it so yeah this is this could be done today will it be done today probably not I got other stuff I gotta do um yeah so super cute but yeah I just have to do Poor Millie doesn't have any snow falling. And then it came with little beads. No, sorry, buttons. So I have to put those on and then, then they'll be ready. But that's a job for another day. Oh, and this is just on a 14 count blue Ada. Now we're into our stockings. So this first one is Holiday Glow Stocking by Dimensions, and this is gonna be for my husband. It's always surprising when you do dimension stockings because you would think that that snowman actually had full cross stitches, but he doesn't. He's like a done in half cross stitch. So you never know what you're gonna get. Now I did change the fabric to a 14 count Ada that I liked better because I tried it on that other fabric and it was just too hard to pull my thread through and I wasn't enjoying it. I said, I'm like, and I'm like, I'm never gonna get this done. So I just chose a white one, but there's that little snowman looking up at Santa. Ooh, my pile is so big. And this one, hmm, 
can't remember what it's called, but it's a Dimensions Gold kit as well. This one's for my mother-in-law. Another nativity. I didn't change out the, um, the Ada on this. The Ada is actually pretty good on this one. It's a little bit uh, stiff, but not too bad. But yeah, oh, and it's got a little lamb there. And uh, had to do the cat, of course. But yeah, I haven't worked on this in a while. I should probably get that out for Christmas in July. And then this one is for my son and it's Santa's flight. I think Colette, Colette the Highway Stitcher is doing this one as well. And we, she had a little conversation about his uh, green, green mitts and I'm, I agree with her. They just, they don't go. I don't know where they're getting the green from, but I'm like, Santa doesn't have green mitts. And I switched out the fabric on this one as well, just for a white Ada, because I tried it with the, the regular fabric, and again, I was struggling with it. And I was like, I'm not going to spend my whole time struggling with fabric. Life's too short. And so I'm going to get fabric that I like. But there he is. Oh, I did do his green mint. That's so funny. Well, it's already in there, so he's going to look weird because I'm like, what's that green? After I had that conversation with Colette that I didn't like it, but it's not mine, so whatever. And then the last one is for my daughter, and it is a Janlin kit, and it's called Father Winter. It actually has beads with it. I love it, it's like an old timey Santa. So hers is the one that I have the most ooh, progress on. So I just have a little bit more cross stitching to do and then for some weird reason, I saved all the back stitch till the end because wasn't thinking that one through. Actually, I don't mind backstitching, but um, sometimes I'm just in the mood to backstitch. But sometimes I just want to keep cross stitching. I'm like, ah, oh, I'll get that later. And then later comes, I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot to do that. Okay, and then the last stocking is mine. And it's a Bucilla kit, but I actually, it's... Um, oh, what's the name? Cooler Studios actually put out the pattern. So I actually bought just the, um, the pattern off of eBay, but then I was like, I don't know, it's so hard to read and stuff. And so then I saw that Cooler Design had it. So I just bought that pattern and it's, I'm so much happier with that. And it's, I love Santas because I do love Santas, especially this guy. He's my favorite. Look how fat he is. He looks so fat like, like he's going to burst out of that suit. And I'm doing this on a 28 count beige. And I've actually gotten quite a lot of stuff done on him. Currently I'm working on mine and I work on it every Sunday just to make sure that it gets a few stitches in. And I am sort of doing some of the back stitching as I go. That's looking really, really good. I'm just working in this area right now here. So his glove goes in here and then I'm gonna go down because I wanna get that fat Santa in. Okay. So that's all of Christmas. So the last thing I have is just my full coverages. I don't have very many full coverages, but I have a few. The first one is a Mystic Stitch, and it is the Many Faces Polar Bear. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I just love him. Uh, my favorite animal is bears, and then my favorite bear is the polar bear. 
And surprisingly, this has a lot of like different colors in there. I don't know if you can pick that up, but there's a lot of different colors. He's not just white. But unfortunately, <laughs> you won't see my progress because I have what? 300? Probably close to 400 stitches. Do you see it? Yeah, you don't. So I'm just in, I'll just put my finger. That's where the stitches are. I haven't worked on him very much. So um, when I do my full coverage, I try and work on them like half an hour every day. So I like to switch them out. So I think I'm ready to switch out from my world map and I might switch in this one next. Uh, this is a pattern that my husband found for me. It's the Resurrection of Christ and it's by St. Joseph's School for Boys Bookstore. So um, this is not a great picture of it, but that's all that was available. So I'm just right up in here. And I'm doing this on a 16 count Gita. It's really nice and soft. Let's see, this is gonna be a bit challenging. Sorry, taking so long. And that's where I've gotten beautiful colors. And it's pretty easy. There's like lots of block stitching. So there is a little, like there's small amounts of confetti, but um, nothing like some of my one is like straight confetti. It drives me mental. And this one, and my husband, again, found this on the internet. I don't know where he found it, though. But this is a Lord of the Rings pattern. This is from a long, long time ago. This was on the internet, so I don't even know if it's available. And you could probably, like, search for Lord of the Rings patterns. But, again, he found it. I don't know how he did it. And this is my biggest one that I have and this one has a lot of block stitching on it as well there is some confetti but whoo gotta wrangle all this so that's where it's at now if you're noticing there's like two squares up here and you're like what are you doing Melva so this was the first um full coverage that I ever did and I was testing my fabric. So do I like one over one or do I like two over one tent stitch? And that's what my test was here. And I like two over one tent stitch because um, I just like that on, this is 25 count. So now I know that so I don't have to test my fabric. So every time that I do uh, full coverage on 25 count I know that I'm doing it two over one tent so that's really important to do especially with the full coverage you're gonna be spending lots and lots and lots of time with that full coverage so always just take the time I know you're excited to start and it is exciting um, but take the time to do a hundred stitches to see what you like um, because I've just seen so many floss tubers like halfway through or like a quarter way through they're like oh I don't like what I did and it's like if you just took that like you know 15 minutes or whatever half an hour to to test your fabric with your thread I use um, CXC thread mostly and DMC um, so CX3 CXC thread is thicker so my two over one ten stitch will look better um, than with DMC. Um, so usually when I do full coverages, I, I get it all with CXC thread. Um, but yeah, you have to do those test stitches or else you're going to be disappointed and then you're going to have to 
like do a whole bunch of things. Whereas if you just took the time in the first place, it would be a lot better. And my last one, dun da da da, is Old World Map by Artisy. So this is the one that is crazy <laughs> with confetti. So of course I started right here and I swear to God, they used every single color in that first page. And I'm like, really people? So I'm really looking forward to getting down here where I can really sort of uh, get some stuff in motion. So I've almost done page one and I started page two because I just couldn't take it anymore in page one. So here's where I'm at. And it's so funny when you do uh, full coverage because you, you're so close. I, I'm very close to my work. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And you take it back and you're like, hey, it's a lady. Because I'm like, what, what's going on here? And so, yeah, it looks pretty good. So I was trying to do this like for half an hour every day. And then I stopped doing it. So at that point, I know that I'm ready to switch. So I think I'll switch my, my full coverage now. Just to make sure that um, I'm doing a little bit every day so it's less overwhelming. So that is practically all my whips. Like I said, my Mill Hill kits are not in here. I have probably, I don't know, five, less than 10. Um, so I thought I'd just talk about, sorry, I'm just reaching back here. Would I talk about what I'm gonna do next month? So how I like to do my whips is, I theme my month, my month. So one month is just going to be Easter. Another month is going to be like January was um, St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day. March was Noah's Ark. Um, and this month has been like fairies. So next month is going to be cats. So I'm going to work on my cats, but I have a free spot. So I thought I would show you some kits that I kitted up things that I may or may not do and again if you have an opinion you can certainly leave me a comment below but some of my choices are I think this is Bayou Cat from Al Florist Embroidery so he's pretty great and that is all kitted up so I'll just use everything from the kit because I think it's 32 count I don't know, all I see is Russian, so I'm pretty, oh, here's the English. Yeah, 32 count. Um, this one is from the Stitch Studio, and it's the Sphinx. So this is pretty much what my kitty cat looks like. He's a purebred Sphinx cat. Um, he doesn't have a black nose, he has a pink nose, so I would have to switch that up. But that's a possibility, and I just have it on like a nice blue gray fabric. And then I also have this kit by Riolis called Gentleman, which this is pretty great too. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I have to buy that kit because like, that's my cat, not my cat's coloring, but that's him. So I wouldn't do it on the, the white Ada. I would, I'm pretty sure I have fabric for him. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for next month. I'm only gonna do these monthly because uh, basically I work on one project for a whole week and then I switch it over. So when I just don't have time working full time to do a video every week and then I'm just not gonna do a weekly video and show you one, one project. Um, I am gonna tell you a little bit about how I do stuff because I do things very, very differently. So I've been stitching for over 30 years and uh, this is what works for me. So I have um, project bags, but not like the fancy project bags because um, that's just not my jam. So I literally buy them at the dollar store for $1.50. And all I do is I keep my floss and the pattern in there. And then I keep my, um, all my projects on these. So I used to work at um, a medical clinic 
And these are actually from the bed rolls for the beds. So I have four of these and all I do is I take them and wrap them all around. So I wrap a whole bunch of, of my whips all around so then that way they're not folded or wrinkled. And I like to keep them that way. And because I only work on a project weekly, so at the end of this month, I'll put away all the fairies and I'll take out all the kitty cats. And then I have a basket beside my my stitching chair, which is actually a cat basket. <laughs> and Yes, I told you I'm a crazy cat lady. And then I just keep them in there. So once the week's over, I have them there. So um, yeah, I hope you hope you like the video. I have one more thing. Because it's my reboot video, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do a little giveaway? So I'm going to give away one of my Mill Hill kits. I have, this is an extra one because sometimes I order extra because I don't know how to use the computer properly and I put two instead of one. I'm sure that's happened to other people too. Um, so this is um, a Verde, I think. I'm pronouncing it in French, but I think it's supposed to be Spanish, so I don't know. It's basically green. So here's the Little Mill Hill kit. So of course it comes with all the beads and the, the whatnots that you need. So I thought that would be fun. So you guys all know, like, don't say giveaway, don't say free, all those words. Um, so just actually use the word welcome because I am being welcomed into floss tube again. So I really hope that you liked this video and please like and subscribe if you do and please leave a comment. Um, I will respond to everyone's comments. I, I've just started commenting on other people's videos again and it's just really fun and it's a great way to meet people. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day.